What's up Amazon sellers? Here are my sales for the last four months in Amazon and we've generated over $40,000 in sales. Now, if you want to know how much I have to invest to make this happen and what I've done, then stay tuned. I'm going to share all in this video with you today. Right, if you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Parkinson and I've been selling on Amazon now doing online arbitrage for the last four years. Now, I'm a seven-figure seller within the UK and also now become a six-figure seller within the USA. So I'm running two Amazon arbitrage businesses. Now, hopefully in the near future, I'm gonna be launching into Amazon Germany, repeating the same model. And if you're interested in learning how I've done it and what I'm doing with my journey and what I'm learning, then do make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. That's just gonna notify you and show you everything that I'm learning as well when I release the video. Okay, so first things first, number one, brief background into the situation. So look, in July, 2022, I pretty much started my journey on Amazon USA. Now, this is not the first time selling on Amazon. Actually, I've already got my UK account. And for me, you know, I've been doing that now for four years. And for that, I'm already doing between, should we say, 200 uh, or should we say up to 400,000 US dollars in sales per month. So definitely smashing it. And I know last month we did over 300,000 pound mark so you're looking like 400,000 US. Now with my experience that I've learned from that and learning about the Amazon UK market I decided hey you know what it's now time to expand my business from the UK into the USA marketplace. Now the thing which I will say for you is it is not easy to start on Amazon USA the business. Yeah I actually thought about this process and released my first video probably back November the year before and it was a long period getting set up creating an LLC and getting the bank accounts, getting everything I needed done, getting Amazon account proved and my verification behind it, and also you know, finding things like prep centers. And I even actually you know, sold my house to fund the Amazon business. I know that is some real investment. Now, if you wanna know more about, as you say, my plan to starting Amazon USA, the business, and you know what I did in a lot more detail, then I'll leave a video up here, check that out. That's gonna help you out understanding that journey and step-by-step -step what I've done, obviously, if you're looking to recreate it. So check that video out. Okay, so today I'm talking about very much around Amazon USA getting started, how much we needed to invest to make 40,000. And the question which I'm really thinking about is, is I started this in November last year. We well, you know what, right now it's Q4 2021, and we're making our plans for 2022. So I wanna know, what are your plans going forward? Let me know in the comments down below, what's one thing you wanna achieve next year? Is it 40,000 in one month revenue? Is it 40,000 in one year revenue? Is it maybe 40,000 in one day revenue? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear. Okay, so this leads me nicely on to how much did I invest to make $40,000 selling on Amazon? Now to show you this, let me do a screen share or actually what I'll do is I'll jump onto my computer and we'll do a seller toolkit, which is my profit and loss software and we'll show you some numbers and obviously talk through that as well. So let's jump in now and show you what's going on. Okay, so here we are logged into Seller Toolkit. Now, the one thing which I just say is this is like um, Seller Board or you know, there's lots of other profit software. So I use this one, I like it. I use it in the UK and the US, super helpful. And it does my repricing as well. If you want to know more, I'll drop a link down below, you can get a, a free trial and obviously check it out. I do use it all the time. So first things first, um, I've just put in the dates, 1st of June through to the 30th of September. Now, if I just kind of talk you through the numbers. So what are we looking at? Well, we've got, should we say sales, 41,000. We've got profit on those sales and we've got number of units shipped and we've got the ROI. Now, the one thing which I will say for you is within the cost of goods, i.e. also as well the ROI, this includes everything like the prep fees and also as well we do the ship from Amazon, our estimation of ship to Amazon from our warehouse into Amazon itself. So when you compare it versus other people's, they would have a higher ROI because most people don't generally include their prep fees into the cost of goods, whereas we do. So, and it depends, if you've got a warehouse, you wouldn't account for it that way. So, but hey, at the end of the day, it's up to you how you do your accounting. And for us, we're doing 28% you know, ROI on this on 40,000, the first 40,000. And at the moment, what we're really trying to focus on is growing the revenue just to get the team operational and then we can drive margin after that. So let's kind of talk through, we did 41,000 in sales and we did about just shy of $6,000 profit. And you've got to think, you know, I've been running this now on probably like a couple of hours a week, that's it. And I've got a team in place and they're doing it. So I'm really, really grateful and using Prep Center and I'm in Mexico City, so very happy. Now, the question you might want to know is how much do we actually invest? 
Well, the good thing about this software, which I really like, is it shows you the cost of goods, like on PL. So let's scroll down now and have a quick look at actually how much stock we sold to generate 41,000. So let's go through. So you can see here kind of like the sales graph, how that's gone up. You know, you can see the sales really improved. And the one thing we're really interested in is right here. So if we come down to this one, what we got here is getting that 5,000 we talked about and the sales of 41,000. The big part you're looking at right here is you're gonna be having your cost of goods. Now in there, you've got your $20,909 that is gonna be the sales is the cost of goods. So for us, when we talk about how much money have we invested to make 40,000 sales, well, quite simply, you can see right here is our cost of goods, our actual cost of goods right now is about $20,000 to generate $41,000 worth of sales. So the model that we generally work to is buy something for $10, sell it for 20. And you can see that pretty much stands up in this example as well. Now, the one thing you've got to think about for us is that if we've invested $20 over a period of four months and we've generated just shy of $6,000 and I've been able to do that as well, working a couple of hours a week, which is fantastic. Now, the one thing which I'll say is, you know, basically when I started on Amazon, I really had VAs with the things that I were paying for, like I said before, like the sourcing tools, the prep center, um, you know, which are investments you, know, you make in the business. And again, because I'm working remotely and as you say, the, the prep center is included in the ROI, the sourcing tools come out later after out of that 5,800. So I don't get to keep it all. I still want to pay for my staff out of that as well. But for me, this is about growing the business. Now, the one thing which I'll say is that the ROI in the first four months, we're looking just shy of 30%. I'm really happy with that. We obviously want to continue to improve it and to make it better over the next four months and, and how we're growing. But right now, it's not so much about just making profit or should we say profit our ROI. It's about growing the revenue and maintaining and growing a good ROI with that as well. So we're still learning, we're still getting better and improving it, but running about 28% over the course of 40, the first 40,000, including prep fees as well. Now for this video right now, when we're recording it, we say right now in this month, and we're in November right now filming this, you know, we're probably gonna end just shy of about 70,000 in revenue for this month. So what does that mean? By the end of the year, 2021, in our first full year, we're projecting to do 150,000 in sales. So if you do the math, you can say quite simply, 150,000 in sales, we would have spent 75,000 on stock. And also as well, if you're gonna be running it out, call it a 30% ROI. And what I'll do is I'll get the calculator out. So if we do 70,000 on stock and multiply it by a 30% ROI, you're gonna be looking at about 21,000 in profit by the end of the year. Now, you know, that ain't bad. And I'm really happy with that considering I'm probably working only a few hours a week on this business. So really amazing. Now, the one thing which I'll say is reaching this point in my Amazon business is not easy. Despite that, you know, I've experienced many problems in my UK business I've learned and also in my USA business as well. And there are differences between them. And I've still made mistakes as well in my Amazon USA business. So what I will do now is let's proceed over to, should we say, the mistakes that I've made in the first four months of my Amazon USA business. Okay, so this leads me nicely on to chapter three. What are the mistakes that I've made selling on Amazon USA? Well, first things first, one thing to learn is not having enough stock in inventory. Now, should we say, for me, we are very focused on scaling the Amazon USA business. And you know, last October, what I saw is actually my sales in the Amazon business started to go down. Now, what happened? Well, it went from 8K, should we say, in one week, down to $2,000. So that was like an absolute shocking experience. So, and for us, you know, we had to investigate it. We had to find out why it was happening. And we learned that basically my purchases were being shipped to the prep center and then the prep center weren't shipping them out. Why? Well, quite simply, we weren't paying the invoices. My team had moved from you know, paying the invoices every day to pretty much batching them to the week, if not towards the end of the month. And as a result, my prep center is just holding the shipment. So like, oh, oh my God. Now for us, we changed the way we did our payments and obviously the monthly payment or stop the monthly payments and moved to a paying as the invoice came in. And for us, we got the shipments moving and it really helped out. Top tip for you, what I do is always just make sure you have these very crystal clear communication of not only what do you need to do with third party service providers such as prep centers, but also as well, what happens if you don't do it? So understand the consequences. So, and communicate that to your team. Now, the second thing which I've learned is about not reading the keeper graph. Now, that is to get an average selling price. So when looking for, we say, profitable products online, it's important to know, should we say, the average selling price of a product or, or even really what it's gonna be in two weeks time. And, and that is, you know, the price that you should be selling, the selling price on Amazon, 
to obviously make sure you sell the product because that's when we only make profit when we sell it and realize the profitability. Now, the best way to see this is through the Keeper charts. And by using Keeper, obviously you can clearly estimate what the selling price has been in the past and obviously what it might be in the future. Now, my purchasing manager forgot to do this in my Amazon business, which is for a few of our products. And as a result, we just weren't selling the products as we expected. For us, that is about you know being consistent in our approach, making sure we're doing the same deal analysis all the time. Also, the just making sure that you know when we have those issues, why is this product not selling? Why are we selling for a loss? Let's go back and check the analysis. Let's see what we can learn. So we've learned from that. And guess what? My team are now back on doing that analysis properly. So top tip for you guys, just make sure that not only you're reading the graphs, but also understanding what the price is going to be and estimating correctly. That's going to be super important. Now, the third thing which I recommend for you guys is buying too little, or well, actually not buying too little, when it's actually buying more than you need. So or should we say buying, most people go a bit cautious and actually buy some more. If you want to grow your revenue, you want to go fast, you've got to invest. And you know, I still understand now it's super, super scary investing so much money, $20,000 into stock. Wow. But you need to do it to make it grow. So for us, it's about buying, you know, we were buying too little of those fast selling items. Also as well, on the other hand, sometimes we actually bought too much when it's too slow. So just got to be super mindful of that and buying a bit more when you need to, again, looking at the keeper graph. Now, Amazon's policy for sending shipments into their film center changed recently, about six months ago in regards to the restock limits. And for us in the UK, we've got like an infinite supply of restock in the US it's still starting out. So we still need to make sure we manage that properly. And if we go over that restock limit, well, what does it mean? It means we cannot ship items to Amazon. So being or well, making sure we're managing the stock within Amazon Seller Central and fulfillment centers is super, super important. Now for us when in the UK, when we experienced this, we literally had one point where we had 12,000 units of stock in Amazon and we only had an allowance of 6,000 and at our current sell through rate, it would take three months before we could start shipping in again, which was like incredible. Couldn't do that. We had to change the business model and now we are focusing much more on faster selling items. So making sure we're just using that inventory, but churning it as quickly as possible. And that is something we're also looking at in the US as well. Now, of course, what does that mean? Well, we need to buy more fast selling items, obviously for me to generate the profit. So just buying that is super important. So final top tip for you on that is always make sure that you remind yourself of the strategy that you're doing. Fast selling, not a problem. Slow moving, maybe not so wide, not so deep, not a problem. Just make sure you understand what you're buying and buy it enough or obviously don't buy too much if it's slow selling. Okay, so now I'm talking about selling on Amazon USA. And one thing which I will say is I'm really enjoying this journey. Yeah. We started thinking about this a year ago. We actually started six months ago and already we've broken the $100,000 mark. Right now I'm talking about how much to make $40,000. And this isn't about today, it's even about this year. This is about next year and the year after that. And hopefully we're gonna be smashing seven figures. Why? Because if we're doing seven figures, and if we're doing it even at 30% profit margin, we're doing over 100,000 US a year. And that's from my third business, which is absolutely incredible. And I'm super, super excited about it. So this is a long-term investment. Now, the one thing you might be thinking about is, Tom, that sounds very well and good, but I'm not maybe the same level as me. Well, you know what? It all starts at exactly the same level. It all starts buying low, resell high on Amazon. And that's what I did four years ago in my Amazon UK business. And you too can do it now. It's easier than ever to do it. So if you are interested in learning uh, how to do it. And the one thing people really struggle with is actually finding leads, getting started, finding deals to buy low, to sell high. Well, if you're struggling with those, do make sure you check out Fast Track FBA Leads. It's a service I created whereby we've got a team in the US and also a team in the UK. They are finding deals seven days a week. They're putting onto our web platform. You can come in, you buy tokens and you exchange those tokens for deals. We limit the supply of them. We remove them once they're over capacity. And also as well, you can see everything about every single deal. 90 day profit, you do your own calculations, keep your charts a lot. When you find a deal that you like in the right category for you in your business, simply unlock it, go to the supplier, buy the product, and then ship it to Amazon get it sold. We show you all the information that you need to make an informed decision. And if there are any problems at all, out of stock, you're gated, can't sell it, don't worry about it. You can get a refund within seconds. If you want to know more, check out Fast Track FBA Leads. I'll drop a link down below. So this leads me on to chapter number four, top tips for you and things to think about. So look, first things first, there are a lot of challenges, you know, that I've experienced in my Amazon journey and you know, a lot of mistakes as well. So let me kind of share some thoughts with you. So first things first, number one, gated brands. Now, 
This has been a real challenge for starting a business. For a new seller, and especially like me, we don't get to take over the US and UK account. We started a fresh account. Now, when you are start selling, you're not allowed to sell a lot of the brands and a lot of the categories. And this causes us problems and a hard time finding deals from IDAs. So if you are starting on Amazon brand new, be sure to be aware of the brands and categories that you're, you're gated in. Now, what I will do is I'll drop a link to a video up here where I've shared, we say, the top categories to get started on. When starting on the USA, check that out. So that's new categories about getting, you know, which you should be able to sell on that you're looking at. The next point is about getting ungated. Now, for us, there are generally two ways you can do it. One is by, should we say, getting an invoice and buying 10 units from an authorized distributor, wholesaler, or manufacturer. And the other one is actually increasing your sales volumes to get through automatic ungating. Interesting enough, that's what we did. We did that approach and it's quite interesting. So what I will do again is I'll leave another video up here about how to get ungated, getting ungated on Amazon, and everything we've learned about that. So do check that out. Now, the third thing which I'll talk about for you is look for a prep center. You know, for me, a prep centers are super valuable. You know, my God, I live in Mexico. I couldn't do this in the US, it doesn't matter. So they do all the prepping, they do everything, the logistics, they support you and they really help you out. They are another arm of your team. Now, for you, if you are interested, I use a prep center in the US called American Warehouse in New Hampshire and I'll drop a link down below to them. It isn't an affiliate link. I don't get any kickback. They do mention Fast Track FBA when you sign up. Hopefully when I go visit them, they will buy me some lunch and obviously they, you know, that will help me out as well. So it's just nice to know that obviously that I'm referring in business. That's who we use and they're in a tax-free state, which obviously helps out with online arbitrage, not paying the sales tax. Now, the fourth thing which I recommend for you is use a VPN. So if you're like me living outside, i.e. Mexico, or if you've got a team like me in the Philippines, using a VPN is a must. Why? Because when making payments online, number one, a lot of suppliers won't even let you access their website. If you're located outside the US, they're not interested. But then number two, when making a payment online, what do suppliers do as part of the payment checks? They check your IP location versus where the card's registered. And if there's a big variance between them, then obviously they flag it and actually you're gonna get canceled orders. So for us, my VAs in the Philippines, they are VPNing into the US and that helps them with not only accessing supplies, but also buying products, which really helps out us not getting so many cancelled orders. So the fifth and the final thing which I'll share with you is today, while I talked about how much money to make $40,000 in sales, is it's 20,000, we put in there, $20,000. Now, interesting enough is that we're actually turning that money. Normally, it's gonna take about probably two and a half months. So let's say, for example, now it only took two months. Well, that $20 or $20,000, we could actually do with $10,000 flipping it two times, i.e. month one, month two, $10,000 back in the bank, and then buy again, ship it out and again coming back. So over the course of the time, while we'd say $20,000 was selling, it might not necessarily mean that we're actually saying you're gonna need 20,000 in one month sum. What you are gonna be doing is obviously churning that money quicker. So for us, it takes up two and a half months right now for us to buy it, spend a pound or spend a, a dollar with a supplier, ship it into Amazon, and get the money back into our bank account is about two and a half months to go around the whole process. So another metric to think about there to help you understand obviously how much you're gonna do. So. If you're going to only take a year to turn, you're going to need all that money in one lump sum. But if you can turn it very quickly, you're probably going to need less because you can keep reusing the same money to grow the cost of goods and obviously ultimately grow the revenue. Now, for me in my Amazon business, look, you know, I'm really happy with where we are. And I know there are people doing so much more and obviously more profitable, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm just really happy. We're making good money and I'm doing on very few hours a week and I'm living in Mexico. You know, $5,000 goes a really long way in Mexico. But one thing I do talk about is, you know, really using the tools, using the, the services like prep centers and also like, the, you know, the team, the VAs are fantastic. I couldn't do this without them. Now, the most important thing for me is having, you know, the great opportunity or should we say the most important thing for my result is having the opportunity to grow my Amazon business because, hey, you know what? 40K in, in four months is not easy. And if you are a beginner in the Amazon game, you know, do understand that. Do think that actually getting 40K does take a lot of cash and takes a lot of time and effort and I've got four years experience. So just be mindful of that. I'm not saying you should beat me, but also as well, on the other hand, you can definitely, there's a lot of people doing way better than me, but also as well, set your expectations. First of all, just learn the business, take your time. I've already got four years experience. So keep that in mind when you're maybe comparing in this video. I'm not saying comparing is a good thing. Now, what I will say for you is selling on Amazon USA is not easy, like I just said. And what I'll do is leave a video around here on how to make $1,000 in one month on Amazon USA 
and that's something that I created in the past I think you're going to really like. But hopefully, I should say you've enjoyed the video. If you have, give it a big thumbs up and hey, hit the subscribe button down below. But for me, Thomas Parkinson, Vastra Thank you very much.